exchange our name to Stride uh, because we're, we, we've done expanded beyond the K-12 space, though, though that's still very much what we do as a priority. Um, what we've also done with the Stride Professional Development Center is we've leveraged some of our expertise over the past two plus decades of supporting schools and students and educators, teachers, principals. Um, and we are trying to innovate, you know, the way professional development happens for educators. And that we're doing that through the Stride Professional Development Center. Um, gone are the days where, you know, it's face-to-face -face only PD. Um, it's episodic professional development. Um, it's professional development that's not necessarily relevant to what teachers and educators need right away. So the Professional Development Center is designed to solve that challenge with some unique and uh, innovative uh, ways of delivering content. All right, man. Well, listen, we are super excited here at the network to be engaged with you all and helping to provide this opportunity for teachers all across the country and especially those teachers that are coming from our HBCU backgrounds because we Absolutely. know that education was always one of the stalwarts of most HBCUs in this country. They all had teaching programs and that's what a lot of them were founded for. So there, let's talk absolutely. a little bit about those special programs that you guys have for yeah. the teacher. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Roy, you hit, you hit on the very important point. Um, you know, right now in our country, we're facing, facing probably one of the greatest challenges, you know, of our teaching core that we have in many, many years. And that that's around this teacher shortage. You know, a lot of teachers are exiting the profession. Um, um, just just based on tenure, you know, they're they're retiring and moving on, and then you have, you know, our existing teachers who are who are being taxed and stressed, you know, particularly post COVID, with, you know, increasing demands, um, challenges that they're facing in the classroom, and a host of other other uh, issues that, that they struggle with, and um, we need good teachers, and we need to support the teachers that we have. So the two things that we're doing. Um, is that we know first year teachers among all teachers are among the first to leave the profession uh, within the first five years. I think they do um, at, at a 44% rate, which is just scary to think that folks are, you know, graduated, want to go in a classroom and make a difference, but, you know, feel like they need to leave within the first five years because it's so challenging. So we want to support them. Um, obviously, as a new teacher, your school that you, you, you work with, you, where you work your first year, the district where you work, there will be some professional development support to assist you. But we want to go a step further. We want to help every teacher in the country get off to a strong start uh, to their first year and have some uh, stick to it in this, you know, to help them get through that first year. So we're offering a year free um, access to the Stride Professional Development Center. It's a ever growing online database of courses that will help them in a variety of different ways. Uh, classroom management, targeted instruction, uh, and, and a host of other things. And the content will continuously grow. Again, it's just another resource that allows them to sharpen their practice, to feel like they're supported, uh, because the research says that teachers are leaving in large part because they don't feel like they get enough professional support. So we really hope that helps new teachers. So again, this is for any new teacher who just graduated in the country. All you have to do is go to our site and uh, sign on using the Teachers Win uh, uh, discount at, at, at checkout. Also, we have a, a, another campaign where during Teacher Appreciate Teacher Appreciation Week, we gifted uh, all teachers in the country, no matter where you are, six months free professional development center access. Uh, but we're doing a special thing with through you, our partnership with the B, BCSN and our, our uh, HBCU graduates, and, and also the schools that you work with. We want any teacher in the country who, 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 you know, through our partnership, um, gets access to the Professional Development Center, and they get six months free using the BCSN 23 uh, passcode at, at checkout. You know, again, our goal is to support and get as many teachers on the site feeling supported, um, you know, to really help, you know, them, them succeed and have some success, not only for them, but obviously for our kids and the communities they serve, so. Most definitely. And Darren, listen, we are super excited again to be a part of this. My mother was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. I have my my best friend is a teacher. Absolutely. So we understand. I've worked in the school system for years. So I understand the resources that are needed. I understand why a lot of these teachers do take the time and they sit there. And after going through college, they're like, you know what, let's do something different. Yeah. So we're happy to be a part of this to help you guys change that. So ladies and gentlemen, here's all you guys need to do. All you need to do is take a look and go to the link that's right below us right now and see what you're going to do. You're going to see two links on the page now, just to make sure. 
The top one takes you to their professional development page homepage that'll let you know about some of the things that are happening there and the things that you have access to. Go to the second link that says teacher appreciation. That'll take you directly to the content page where you can sign up and get your free year if you're a new teacher and your free six months if you're an existing teacher. Let's show them how we utilize resources and we make sure that we take time for those folks who are HBCU alum and use this. And let's see what Stride has to offer. We're excited about it. We know you will be too. Darren, is there anything else that you'd like to say to the votes? No, I mean, just, you know, as a teacher myself, you know, and and um, understanding the need. Um, and, and of course, with the, you know, the, the diversity that's needed in our teaching core across the country, you know, I know our HBCU teacher graduates are just uh, exactly what we need in, in our community. So I really encourage them and just glad to be doing this partnership with you all. All right. Well, folks, there you go again, Mr. Darren Reed, Senior Vice President of Stride Professional Development Learning. We will be seeing you guys, and trust me, you'll be seeing more from their partnership with us as we move forward, always trying to do our best to make sure that we move forward with the community. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. yeah. I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team wanna lose. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson, Charles Bishop. Welcome to episode 418 of Inside the HBC Sports Lab Radio Show and Podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBC sports. From institutions large and small, from the NAIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBC sports culture, HBC athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBC athletic programs and the business of HBC sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Kavil, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to our KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, multi-Hall of Famer Ralph Cooper in a beautiful home with Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. You know, gentlemen, I usually ask how you're doing, and I either choose Mike, Charles, depending on you know, which way I flipped the coin. But today, I'm going to start with this young man over here, Brother Bishop, Charles Bishop, as we know him, <laughs> to let the world know that he is just celebrated. And Mike will take arms, brother, this because he stopped counting at like 29. And he just multiplies <laughs> different numbers and it multiplies over. But, yeah. uh, uh, I think we aged like fine wine, so I'm just gonna put it out there. This young man turned the big five o, so he, the next one is on us. Ah, when thank we you. find a way to partake, and we're gonna have to have us one of those boys trips. Um, but we'll maybe save that for one of these breaks as we get into the fall season. We'll be traveling, so I don't know how long you're gonna try to parlay this and make sure that you get multiple drinks, but. Uh, you're gotcha. pretty nice with that, but, you know, we'll make sure you get your <laughs> golf game, you know, your cigar, your drinks. We'll, we'll make sure that you are recognized and right. Uh, <laughs> but we do want to celebrate you in all seriousness. Congratulations. I know it's a day after the day, but we want to make sure the world knows that we're excited about Charles traveling around the sun one more time. Mm. Uh, the equivalent is this, taking 50 trips. 5 -oh, How does it feel, man? Welcome to ah. the, 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 the other side of life. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Uh, man, it's just phenomenal. I uh, 
I, I think I said in a Facebook post that I, I, I laughed and I reminisced and I laughed some more yesterday. But uh, to, to uh, get to this milestone in life, very appreciative. And I've had a lot of people pour into me. Uh, I'm the manifestation of a lot of prayers. So I'm really appreciative uh, for all of my family, be it uh, my, my, my internal family, my, my Jackson family, my Houston family, my, my Jackson State family, SWAG family, HBCU family. Uh, just so appreciative of everything uh, everybody's poured into me. And, and, you know, like I said, hopefully I poured something into you along the way as well. So just really appreciative and appreciative for, uh, for this platform, Doc, uh, to get an opportunity to do something that I really, really enjoy, and that's talk HBCU sports. Well, Texas Southern family wants to show you a little bit of love. The Prairie Texas Southern family. Yes, they have. We still have. trying to figure out how the hell that happened. <laughs> yeah. Especially you know, over the last couple of years, two years ago, when they culminated in the championship game, man, that that kind of got a little tight there. <laughs> I, I, I try to tell people I'm really a child of the swag. You know, I'm I'm, I'm really a HBC yeah. child. Oh, you know, yeah. So, uh, but no, very appreciate yeah, a lot of a lot of well that. wishes, mm-hmm. a lot of well wishes yesterday. Absolutely, happy twenty nine. I'd be remiss if I didn't. If, instead of asking you how you doing, giving you this moment to uh, say what you want to say to Charles. Yeah, I keep saying happy 29th birthday. He's been, <laughs> t- he's been 29 for 20 some years and still right. 29. That's the story. We're going to stick to it. 29, and, uh, 29 for 21 years now. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And we, yeah, with all these nice accolades about cigars, he got to take a shot. He got to take a birthday shot. He got to take, take two. You know me. He's going to have to take two birthday hey, shots. Hey, Since it's 5 old, make him take five. Yeah. <laughs> we'll spread it out. We'll take spread birthday we'll shots. Take then we'll just multiply. Hey, you know yeah. I'm always yeah. up for that. Now. Always up. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to show up, and I ain't going to say nothing. Just drink. Right. <laughs> exactly. Hey, like a true like a true big brother, just go. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. Uh, happy birthday. No, happy birthday. Mike, uh, Mike's, Mike's still out here hazing, folks. Mike, man, we've been trapped for 20 plus years. Man, what you doing? 30 years. We like, we like to call it now education. Hey, so. hey, 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 hey. It's never enough. Don't worry about it. So no, happy, happy birthday. Br- what you mean? <laughs> In all sincerity, happy birth, happy birthday, young brother. So he's Thank younger you, brother because he's a little bit younger than me. So um, I look, I, I but I look up to his professionalism. Oh, he, he is a he's child. Probably of admitting swag. that you're younger than he is. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm on. I mean, you see all this gray. I can't deny all this gray right here. It's been a long week, so no. But for, uh, congratulations, Mo, more blessings to you, brother, and another trip around the, another trip around the sun. Congrats, man! Look for many more prayers and thank you. All of that good stuff. Look to get you back on the golf course. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. We got the trip was canceled because of my line, brother. But we are gonna get out there. We're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. Yes, it is. <laughs> With that saying, uh, lab listeners, just saying, uh, uh, they all saying happy birthday, good evening to the lab listeners. Appreciate you. Boy. Let's get into our show now. Starting with you, Charles, since you the birthday boy of the week, uh, what news do you want to share this week that has you still uh, thinking about the HBCU sports landscape? Well, uh, and, and let me start here. And, and I want to hopefully use this platform uh, in this regard. Um, uh, if we have we have hidden somewhere in upwards of twenty uh, plus days of triple uh, digit weather. Uh, it is really really hot out there, and hopefully our ads and our, our, our stadium staffs and, and and things of that nature, security are, are taking a look at this so that they can really uh, look at their internal operations with regards to uh, how. Uh, we keep our fans cool going into this September month. Uh, it's going to be really important. Now, of course, we saw uh, last year how the weather played a, a, an effect uh, with, with regards to fans and things of that nature in the first month of the season. So uh, hopefully we're having serious discussions about those sorts of things now with regards to uh, stadium staff and security as well in terms of trying to find a way to help our fans stay cool uh, during this really, really uh, hot time uh, nobody can't tell me, you know, the climate has not uh, changed. Uh, but uh, hopefully, we're we're having serious discussions in those regards. Great point. It's uh, really appropriate. We see in these multiple hundred day uh, weather's of a hundred degrees 
days, I should say, with multiple days, and it doesn't seem like it's relenting, but even if you get down to 99, 98, 97, it's still quite hot. So for all those out there, continue to take care of yourself. Make sure if you can get into uh, cooler weather, make sure you're drinking and hydrating yourself. And as you go to these games, be prepared uh, to make sure you don't do like Charles with Mike. Uh, party too hard the night before. Make sure you, <laughs> or if you do, make sure you get your water. With that being said, Mike, uh, what's on your mind in terms of HBC news of the day? Yeah, just reiterating the, the the policy of forced hydration. We used to say that in the military when we had these conditions that you know you're your own brother or sister's best keeper. And we used to have folks for, uh, do a uh, partake a program called forced hydration. You may you may not even think you're thirsty, but in times of like this, when you have triple digits all across the southwest and southeast, you have to employ a program called forced hydration. So take breaks. And, and copious amounts of hydrating the body. The body is mostly water. You have to hydrate it. And the the, no, the biggest misconception is uh, I'm not thirsty. I don't need water. But, and that's a dangerous time, especially the heat conditions. Having the misconception is uh, I'm not. So please, please, forced hydration. Um, mo- moving to the news, Dr. Gavil uh, and CB, um, we, we had the passing of, of, of a legend. Um, our, Dr. Alfonso Carter, uh, who really, you know, his passing or his transition really has hit the North Carolina a and and Shaw community really hard. So they're feeling the loss of former, uh, he was a basketball standout. He was a Bears uh, athletic director. And so he passed away on this past Wednesday, just yesterday. He served as coach and athletic director for 40 years before retiring in uh, 2020. So among some of his accolades and high, high, highlights uh, and tenure, uh, he was he led the win, men's and women's basketball teams uh, to respectively, including a CIAA Southern Division title for the Lady Bears and the first 20-win season for the men's team in nearly two decades. Also, while he served as athletic director, the Lady Bears won the 2012 NCAA Double uh, Division II National Championship for Women's Basketball, becoming the first CIAA team and HBC, HBCU to do so since Hampton in 1988. That's saying something. Think, pause, think a minute. That's saying something. He also oversaw the, the ascent of the Bears tennis program as head coach and athletic director with 22 CIAA championship trophies to their credit. I'll say that again. I'm going to rewind, press play. 22 CIAA championship trophies to their credit. He also helped bring football back to Shaw in 2003 after a 30-year absence. So he was an athlete, he was an All-American basketball player at North Carolina a and and was a 1994 inductee into that school's Hall of Fame. So hats off, big tribute to uh, uh, Dr. We got to give this man his accolades, Dr. Alfonso Carter. Let's take a moment of silence for Dr. Carter. Very appropriate message and a moment of silence. Uh, let me go back to you, Charles. What's some other news on your mind in terms of this week of HBC Sports? Countdown, countdown. Yeah, it is countdown. Uh, and this comes to us actually from our, our lab listener, Brandon King, via HBC Sports, but a pair of ex swag football players taking the XFL combine draft. Former Jackson State wide receiver Dallas Daniels in Prairie View, tight end Tristan Wallace. Uh, were HBC f- football players that were taking the XFL combine draft on Wednesday. Uh, Dallas was claimed by the Orlando Guardians, and Wallace was picked up by the Houston Roughnecks. So Wednesday, the XFL held its rights draft with a pool of players coming from XFL combine and showcases. 28 players were acquired by seven teams. Uh, and we take a look at Dallas Daniels last year. He was a second leading receiver with 66 receptions, 692 yards, and six touchdowns the number one scoring offense and the top pass and attack in the select. So kudos to those two players uh, getting an opportunity to play on a professional level. Very much so. Kudos to the both of those gentlemen getting another opportunity to continue to play a football at a high level. Mike, what else do you have on your mind? Well, we got the we got the Tigers with some news. Uh, this is the TSU, the Texas 
Southern University type with some news. Vernetsky, uh, Texas Southern Vice President for Intercollegiate, Intercollegiate uh, Athletics, Kevin Granger, has named Vernet Skeet as the 13th head coach in program history. Pending Board of Regents. So we got, we got a, we got a, we got to get a chance to talk with her in the interview ah, quickly on okay. that. One of the things that I wanted to do in regards to that, as we get to her, I want to save some of that for that interview and not go too deep in that surprise people with that. Um, talking gotcha. about talking about football renovations, as we just talked about those athletes, I want to give a shout out to Dr. Jason Cable. We did this when you talked about the president and the committee, and I kind of gave him a shout out. Renovations to Houston Markham Complex Players Lounge completed. So you continue to see that these upgrades are being made to many of these SWAC, uh, to some degree, HBCU uh, platforms and programs, uh, athletics, if you would. In this case, renovations to the Alabama State uh, University's Houston Markham Football Complex Players Lounge were recently completed prior to the start of preseason. Camp funding the lounge was possible by FBHIB. Football alumni, the walls have new wall wraps that were produced and installed by Science Now of Montgomery. Markham Complex Players Lounge, Markham Wall, one wall pays tribute to the complex namesake, Coach Houston Markham, who led Alabama State to the 1991 SWAC and HBCU National Champion. The wall also has the Hornet Creed that the team recites prior to the meetings. The lounge features a gaming wall with flat screen television and gaming chairs, ping pong table space for student athletes to study and relax before and after practice. Early updates to the complex and funded by, again, FPHIB, included a new nutrition lab station and tend to daily nutritional needs of student athletes in the weight room was refreshed with paint wall wraps. The complex was named for Houston Markham, the winningest head coach in Hornets football history and was the head football coach from 1987 to 1997. He led ASU to 68 victories, which stands as the highest total among any coach in school history. But that being said, I've noticed quite a bit of that. Uh, the nutrition labs are going around. I, I see yeah, people getting into that business, yeah. uh, which is obviously a smart thing to do. Uh, but uh, kudos to the presidents, chancellors, namely, mainly the ADs, VPs of athletics for making this happen. And the alumni, a lot of them are involved supporting this or outside funding organizations. So it's good to see uh, that the SWAC continues to step it up in a lot of the HBC programs for that matter. With that being said, let's go into our first break. We'll come back on the other side. We should uh, ready uh, for Coach Skeet, the interview that Mike kind of teased up a little bit there. Good job, Mike. With that, we'll be right back after this break. You see, Head & Shoulders has scalp shield technology, protects against flakes even between washes. It's never not working. Kind of like us, we're never not working. Number 15? That's my rub. Ooh, nice. Never not working. Never, ever, never, ever not working. Welcome everybody to Juneau, Alaska. I don't like this one. Me neither. Let's get out of here. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head & Shoulders scalp shield technology. Stride K-12 powered schools are ready to put over 20 years of being a leader in online education to work for you. Dive into curriculum design for the online classroom. Team up with state certified teachers nice. trained in virtual instruction. Take control of your child's education journey. Discover the power of personalized learning with a leader experienced in preparing kids for a future they can be excited about. Take charge. Stride K-12. Enroll now for the fall. T. Madden & Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden & Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden & Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123.
Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At CDW, we get... Press the analytic data with your hip-hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want to love laugh. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention. This is Dr. Neal with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Charles Bishop and Mike Washington. We have our guest today, Texas Southern University women's basketball coach, Coach Burnett Skeet, 13th head women's coach in the program's history. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to the lab, Coach Skeet. Well, I'm excited to be here. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Good thank stuff. You. you know, doing those commercial breaks, we already tell everybody it really gets good. <laughs> and unfortunately, we can't air that on the show. We have a good time in the background as we try to make this all work. Uh, sure. But it's good to have you. One of the things you were mentioning at break, I want to give people a chance. A lot of folks know, obviously, you in school at Alcorn and had a chance to go through your coaching. But where, where are you originally from? I am originally from, I was born in Florida. I was born in Florida, but I am um, of Caribbean descent. My dad's from Barbados. And so um, I've, I've stayed a little bit of everywhere at this point, but um, my, my roots go back to the Caribbean. Um, and so I'm a Florida girl. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Mike is going to ask you for some rice and peas, peas and rice. He, he peas and learned rice. how to say it correctly. Peas and rice. <laughs> yes. right. He, he, right. he says it wrong, but we, we got it right say it right now. <laughs> Our last I interview was with the new AD. Saturday, so yeah. Oh, oh now you tell us. <laughs> you got a new best friend. Whatever yeah. you don't feel, you got yeah, we, 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 we cook, cook around here. We don't, we don't play no games. Yeah, I, I laughed in a bit. We had the uh, new athletic director at the University of Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. um, and so we got into some of that Caribbean dishes. So this oh, is yeah. right on time. This is this yeah. is good. That, that Virgin Islands don't really make the real jerk, but what's the <laughs> Yeah, it's not, you know, they 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 too Americanized, you know. It's it's but we still love them all the same, you know. Oh, <laughs> the same no this sounds like Africa and Nigeria and Ghana in terms of the Joe Love Wars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get the peas and rice wars. This is good. I, this I is saw, rice, baby. I saw Rihanna and um and because Rihanna is Beijing also. Uh, that's what you call people from Barbados. And Nicki Minaj, she's from Trinidad. And they were joking and they was like, yeah, you know, we like each other in Caribbean, but we do things like the line. We draw the line, um, what, you know, in the sea where the fish fly. So with the, that, that divide... <laughs> That that divide right there make us a little different, but uh, the way we cook and the way we do stuff, it's a little bit of a. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's real talk. See now, y'all get stuff you can't get anywhere else. Well, let's that get into some real basketball uh, talking business. I know you're excited about the second year as you're building the program. Tell us a little bit about what are the expectation. I know people are getting into football season, but before they know it, it's time for basketball. Uh, as you already have your students coming in and things of that nature. Well, what are the expectations for the basketball team this year? I mean, I, you know, even in with recruiting, you know, um, I, I talk a lot about the pride of Houston. And I have termed this phrase the middle class mecca. Um, mm -hmm. Because in Houston, there is so many entrepreneurial spirits, hard workers, go-getter, like in the ground, in the dirt, from the muscle. And I want our team to be community, right? I want the community to be able to have a reflection 
of them in us. They see us working hard. They see us grinding. We didn't have a, a easy road. We're battling from a season of roughness and transition and turnover. And um, we're coming, you know, to 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 put some pride on there and still put out a good product. And so um, I think I, I, I what we're trying to build a product that resembles the same thing, you know, the, the spirit of Houston, the middle class Mecca, hard work, grit, do things the right way um, and, and succeed. Cause that, I mean, Texas mm -hmm. in itself is about, uh, is, there's a lot of success, you know, so. Yeah. That's a great term. That's a great term. And I like yeah. that. I'm about, to, I'm, I'm, I'm about to copyright it. I know I didn't say that. I want the first one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Charles, yeah, go ahead and follow up. Copyright that. <laughs> okay, Skitty, I, I want to ask, uh, what, if anything, did you learn about uh, your team or the culture of Texas Southern your first year there? Um, you know, I, I had a mission um, of the way I wanted to coach basketball, just being on so many elite levels and mm -hmm. things that I saw as an assistant that you don't always get to see as a head coach or anything because the kids come to you more. And just things that even though you may be experiencing success, the kids were missing. And when it comes to women's basketball, I can't speak to any other sport. There's a huge disparity of what happens after the court is over and um once the ball drops and you can no longer bounce it who do they become what are they doing in life how are they succeeding and there's some it's a direct correlation with the success that they have on the court and how they viewed it you know and so knowing that that was a tie into our success and we're not 75 million dollar contracts you know when god sent me to build this when he gave me a vision for what i wanted to do it, I felt like I had to be tried through the fire. Like, are you going to stick to this? Are you still going to pour in character, integrity, God, excellence, even when it's not showing the results? Um, but but what it did, it made me a better coach. And I'm actually there because I, I do understand my patience where you can't plant the seed and eat the apple overnight. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of people want that. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. our roots were growing. And Unfortunately, we were very, the, the one thing, the very first meeting I ever had with the girls, they I asked them, what do they want to be known for? And they said competitiveness. They wanted to be competitors. So all year long, even though our wins and losses didn't really, we competed in a lot of those games up and down. And so mm -hmm. we accomplished that. Now it's definitely time to accomplish more. Uh, but what it really taught me was to, to remember that some of the wins aren't always seen up. And mm -hmm. don't compromise because what I'm building needs strong roots so it can withstand. Um, and so now you'll kind of see the benefits of, of, of that that foundation. And that. so it really taught me that um, this is a great, like I'm so blessed to have an administrator and an AD like, you know, VP Kevin Granger, like who really saw that because he played here. He has the passion and the love mm -hmm. for this place. And he, he didn't come in wanting instant success or to glamorize. He wanted it to be built correctly. And there's so many people across the TSU board that want alumni, you know, like uh, Elaine Britton. And, you know, there's so many fans that come in that that really want this to be built the right way. And so I, I, I wanted to give respect to that as a building. I think we, we're getting to a place where we will do that. So, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Great point. And you you talked about your experience as you traveled and had a chance to grow in your coaching schemes. And it, it, coming from Texas A&M under Hall of Fame coach, head coach. And this is birthday. And Blair, for those that may be yeah. familiar with him. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. We just celebrated a birthday yesterday talking about that. Uh, uh -huh. Mark Marquette, Illinois. That's Charles over there. He, he don't don't worry about that. He, he gonna ask for something. So don't don't don't, don't get in there. Don't get fooled. Nothing. You don't know I work, so you know the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, uh, go ahead and ask the follow up question before we all get in trouble. I know, right? Y'all 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 walking toward the cliff. So. Uh, <laughs> So, so as Dr. Camille alluded to, you you have a, a varied degree of experiences with Texas A&M, Illinois, Marquette. You have HBC roots, I believe, at Alcorn. So you take this gumbo of experiences and you mix, you know, what you're going to do in Houston 
But tell us about what's what's the gumbo in your sauce? How are you going to recruit people from Houston? Because we typically have a problem with keeping Texas talent in Texas. And so if you want to circle around Houston, what is going to be the gumbo in your – what's going to be the secret sauce? I, I tell people all the time, don't ask me questions that you want the truth in because I don't, I don't have a fluff gene. And the reality of the situation, Texas is successful. It is big, it is bright, and it does a lot. So these kids in these high schools, they come from winning traditions. They're playing on the most elite levels. They've had trainers. Mm. They've had elite. Like, they're, they're I, you know, I get videos from recruits right now. They got the bands on. They're doing explosive training. They're doing this stuff in high school that you think you should. Like, when I was getting to college, we were exposed to, or you saw the pros do that you might have not done. But these kids are doing this now. So, mm already mm -hmm. winning they already have nutrition plans they already have a regimen they're coming out with that so you have to be able to match that they're not going to go down going up yeah. <laughs> you know so we have to have a program that establishes that because we got a lot of kids who honestly our roster you know compared to, to our record probably you know but they built they're bought into the vision of what we're trying to do which is something historic you know, so they're bought into that. But a lot of these kids, like, they have tremendous work ethics and excellency. They're on the USA team. They're like, Texas is a, a, a has a plethora of talent that can rise, but they already, like, they know what they're looking for. They're serious kids. This is a serious sports. Thing. Like, these kids know what pros look like. They know what they're looking for. They're not confused. So we have to be able to match that. And we are building that every single day. But this isn't a place where you can just, oh, come go. Oh, you got a scholarship. Let's go. Like, no, these kids want to plan. They want, you know, they want to be seen. Everything is on social media every single day. They don't want to feel like they're getting less. And they're coming from enormous high schools who have tremendous resources, who are doing the same thing that some of these colleges are doing already. So they want this winning characteristic. They want to travel. They want to go for, like, some of these high schools. I, I talked to a high school coach the other day. He was like, oh, I'm taking my team to play, uh, you know, I was like out of the country, like you know. Wow. It was, so it, it's it, and, and this that's here in Texas. So you know that that's what we got to match. We've got to continue to ele elevate and build a platform that sustains things that they're experiencing already. If we want to continue to get top talent, but if you ask them, should we go to the Dollar General and hand out a scholarship? Well, yeah, we could do that, but it's not going to elevate the program, you know. <laughs> So, so when you're talking about serious kids who are going to take the sport serious and bring pride and respect, these kids in Texas already have that. They already know what it looks like. And that's that's respect. And I, again, I've lived in Florida. I've lived, and that's no disrespect to any other state. But Texas by far, because the climate and the environment breeds so many opportunities. Like Illinois is cold all the time. Florida, that's other stuff. Like people ain't really... You know, where football is great. It's a little bit more different, but like the, the sharpness, you know, like I said, this is the middle class mecca. So you may be in Florida, but you may not have the resources or the, the financial situation to do some of these things. In Texas, these kids have this in elementary. Yeah. Coach, I want to follow up on that because I think that is fascinating and extremely important that we get a chance uh, with somebody that's expert in the field that, that has done it, particularly in the state and seen it uh, so much. What are your thoughts in regards to what the separation has been in Texas? A lot of people saw, see Texas as a football state, right? Mm -hmm. um, and over a long period of time, it maybe was, but uh, maybe over the last 10, if I'm not correct, 15 years, and it's always had a basketball tradition, particularly in Dallas, Houston, over a period of time. But it sounds like the state, in a lot of ways, has moved to have more basketball success at the collegiate level when you, whether that's um, Texas Southern, Prairie View, men's programs, women's programs over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, when you start taking it out from Texas, Texas A&M, Texas mm -hmm. Tech, yeah. uh, many of these programs, men's and women's, mm -hmm. have had significant yeah. success Final Four, national championships, every time on the women's side. What do you see as the difference of since you've been here and have been exposed in regards to why you're seeing success, uh, regardless of the division conference in a lot of ways, in basketball versus not in football? 
I mean, honestly, it is the resource shift because mm. th th this is the reality. There's not a state, there's not a high level program, there's not a program that don't recruit from Texas. It ain't one. You can ask any power, I mean, in, in basketball for the longest. And and what happens is our kids leave and then they come back if it don't work. But if they leave, they go. And so, so much because it hasn't been the focus. People didn't want to sit behind football. They didn't want to sit behind, you know, other mm. sports. And in, in other places like the Indiana, the Florida, the, where those sports were rising, people went to that. But they all took Texas kids. Like, look at the research. All of these kids are from Texas. You know, all of these kids have had success. And then the schools that, you know, they were able to keep some of these Texas kids home. It wasn't as much as a priority. Um, and so now that you see the transition kind of flowing through all sports, kids are like, well, I'm going to just, I'm going to stay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stay. And so, it's just, mm -hmm. and so people are a little bit more pro, but it's kind of like, I'm going to go where I'm valued. Everybody in America, I have been one of the top recruiters in, you know, the, 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 this industry, you know, most of my career. And I can honestly say there hasn't been a time. I remember when I first started out in Miami, I was flying out to Dallas. I was flying out there. Like, I knew, like, that was one of my, it was my stop. You know, I knew who DFW was. I knew, like, I, there wasn't, you know, we, 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 we ventured in these places a lot. I remember understanding how hot Texas was coming from Florida and walking out the gym for the first time as a college coach. And it was a hundred degrees at night. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You know, you know it, it's different, you know, but, but now I think, Texas has got a little bit of like, now nah, we got to show our love for our kids because we're watching them go be successful. So many other places. So it's just, it was a focus of whoever's controlling the revenue. You can tell it was a shift in the demand to keep these kids home. And the minute they said that, and, and again, we all want to feel love, right? So the minute they started feeling the love, right. and they, on I, the thing, they, 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 they start staying. Yeah. I think you said it perfectly when you talk about folks want to be bad. Charles, did you want to? A quick question. I know well, folks uh, have yeah, to get out of here, so I want I know, to and, and it's kind, of, oh. kind of fascinating uh, because I, I'm curious about that the, the unique challenge of, of selling uh, Texas Southern, uh, especially with regards to you, you mentioned middle class Mecca, uh, with so many high schools that are halves. I mean, there is a plethora of high schools uh, around the, just the Houston area that that absolutely have pretty much everything they need. And you mentioned the players coming in. They already, you know, have nutritional plans. They already have a program. Does that, how, how does that present a unique challenge for you at Texas Southern? Um, you know, it's, it's it, resources is always the challenge. And then there's, there's, there's two components, right? You, you have kids who are definitely not as exposed in probably areas that have left, like everybody doesn't have that. But then when you look at TSU as a university, like our standards of entry are very high compared to most HBCUs as well. You know, and so um, I, I joke and I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but I, I used to call it that when I first got here, I was like, this is Texas Stanford University. <laughs> like this thing, <laughs> You know, because it's, it's harder to get kids in. And so... <laughs> If they, one, don't have that program where they used to that regimen and those grades and those to get in, then they, they then they're then they so used to the good stuff on the other end that it's also like, well, can I have more? You know, mm -hmm. and so, because I don't, because any any serious athlete, and, and we can make this seem as good or high or low as we want to, but any serious athlete, that is going to college for whatever sport they're going to. They want the freedom to not have to worry and to be able to participate in that sport wholeheartedly. What does that mm. mean? I don't want to worry about nutrition. I don't want to worry about housing. I don't want to have to worry about paying my, I want to be able to focus wholeheartedly in this thing that they're doing. So there, there's such a catch 22 of where the NCAA is going now. And now adding this component in NILs, yes, because we can't technically take care of the kids, but the kids who need to be taken care of, we're not going to go spread it out, you know? And so now we're glamorifying, we're giving it to them. We're like, oh yeah, they need it, they get it. But like the ones who continue to get it poured on, it's not helping the bottom half make it a competitive mess because we still have deprivation at the bottom. 
and mm -hmm. the toppers continue to get into the top. And I'm not saying that they don't need it or don't deserve it, but like after you get a certain amount, which if, if I would have created the NCAA, okay, what's the rational amount that you should have? Okay, once you get to half a meal, you can't accept no more. Trickle that on down to somebody else. But yep. we'll have one person making millions and trillions and then you got everybody else who might not need. So now I'm trying to compete versus them and I'm hungry. I don't have this. I don't have that. And so how is my mind? Like I would love for all colleges to be able to present a package where we take away worry, stress from the kids and they get to see who's the real athletes who really could focus, who really could give their body and their soul and bring their body under and compete into a way to be successful. Um, and we often don't have that. And then we wonder why they can't match up. And it's not talent. We could probably go in there and drill for drill. These kids can compete equally, but the endurance of it is not there because we're trying to put 87, you know, in a Lambo. Yeah, yeah, that's that's real. That's real. Sure. So, sure. Coach, I, I know you have a busy schedule, and, and you had something scheduled that you need to get to. Oh man, I um, so, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but I, I, so I wanted to get you out on this. I, I wanted to make sure we gave you a moment. Any last thing you wanted to share specifically that you wanted to communicate and get to the community out there at large. I want to give you this moment before we take. You know, next people break. ask a lot of what we can do all the time, and I say. Support isn't always monetary. You know, um, I may go to your mansion and feel like out of place because I'm scared to touch something, sit down and move. But I could come to, you know, the hood and everybody on the porch, everybody running in there and gave me 15 hugs before I got to the door, hand me a plate of chicken, chicken told me I was too skinny. The place I'm going to go back the most is probably in the hood. Does that make sense? And so what I yes. would encourage the yeah. thing I see a lot of keep them here. Y'all don't, don't leave. Da, 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 da. Show them your support. Fill the gym up. Because mm. what we lack in other resources, we can give in love. And that's what the HBCU started on. That's the theme of it. That was the, we come out, we get dressed, we celebrate the frat sorority, and we show love when we have lack. The love covered the lack. And that's that was the theme of our HBC. And so we've got to keep building that up. And now everybody got busy. Everybody got their own world. And that's so hard because we are in a middle class maker where everybody got something going on. But if we decide to pour into these kids and show them the love and make this feel like a home, mm. we're going to get more out of all of them. And that's going to be a feeling that they're going to have forever. So if I could encourage you to do anything is get some season tickets, get the schedule, come to some home games. We got five non-conference home games this year. Get out, say hi to these kids. My kids are very approachable. Show the love because love encourages us to take that extra step when we feel like we can't breathe. Very well. Good stuff. Very well stated. Good stuff. Great point. Great stuff. That's Coach Renette Skeet, Texas Southern University's women's basketball coach. You'll be hearing more from her as the season gets in there. As you said, for those out that are in Houston, particularly Texas Southern fans, get your season tickets. Yes. You're in this area, you want to see some HBCU sports support, uh, come right on here to H&PE Ring because you got a good product on the field and you know Coach Skeet is getting it done the right way. Uh, so He's a race. That, we'll get a chance to bring you back on as things come back. With the captain planting. <laughs> Don't make sure. He's a race. Let's go. <laughs> We'll let Coach Skeet out of here before we get in trouble with that. We'll be right back after this break. Pete? At CDW, we get speed as the new currency of success. Our team spends way too much time tending to outdated applications and software when they should be focused on driving application agility and innovation. CDW Amplify Development Services modernizes software and application development to help accelerate innovation and digital transformation. So you mean building new applications, UI, and mobile interfaces? Well, you said you needed to innovate more quickly. Oh, so he's a listener. To do more at scale, trust CDW Amplify Development Services. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Nope. Nope. 
Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. All right, coach, you kind of, y'all kind of switched practice to the night. So just talk about how is that uh, different from the daytime? Yeah, it's a lot cooler at night. Uh, so our guys aren't losing as much uh, hydration as far as the day goes so we're uh, gonna play at night so we're just trying to get our guys acclimated to the time and the, and the weather that we'll be playing in. Yeah, so now pretty much uh you got the, the pads on so what has been the speed of camp compared to the beginning uh, the speed has been the same you know our guys are flying around having fun enjoying it making mistakes as they go but making those mistakes going full speed and so it's uh, week two, so just talk about the progress compared to when we were uh, the time last week. Yeah, it's just, we're just trying to get one day better, 1% one, 1 better each day. Uh, we, we've seen some, some uh, improvement each day, and that's what it's about, not going backwards, but moving forwards as far as uh, improving in these phase of the game. All right. Dr. Camille's inside the HBC Sports Lab. You see it with Coach Texas Southern University football program getting it in as they get ready for the season. Let me go to you, Mike. Uh, what are your thoughts? Oh, I, 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 I think it's the appropriate move first for practicing at night. I think a couple of other teams are practicing that practice at night. Um, it does a couple of things. Number one, it kind of alleviates the hydration thing. Um, I know they're practicing at, in the afternoon, practicing at night. You get a chance to see some things at full speed, more so that you can't see during the day. Um, sounds like he's able to run through all the rotations. So I, I definitely like the approach. And I would actually recommend some of the other teams that aren't doing it to, to take that approach, given the triple digit, you know, plus numbers that we've seen. The other thing is uh, he said a couple of things that sounded really good. You know, 1% each day getting better, running full speed. You know, he didn't alleviate too much, but uh, in his voice, I heard prog progress uh, in, in some of the early practices as well. So those are just my initial thoughts on hearing that that interview. Good stuff there, Mike. Coach McKinney, as you saw there, Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of the Texas Southern program? They're trying to take that next step. Uh, they probably overachieved in a lot of people's heads in terms of how they close out the season. Many people said they maybe one play away in terms of an injury where they actually would have been playing for a conference championship. They want uh, proverbially coming out of Houston, if you, you would. Now they're back. They want to knock down, kick down that door, as you've heard uh, over the years in Houston. What are your thoughts in terms of Coach McKinney and the program after watching uh, that? Uh, this is a team that has a lot of buzz. Uh, like you said, they were uh, maybe one quarter away. Uh, from from uh, getting to the SWAG championship game. And I think everything rests on the, the health of Andrew Body. He's one of the more dynamic quarterbacks uh, in this conference. Uh, he's uh, been under center now for, for uh, the past couple of seasons. So uh, there's something to be said for having a veteran presence under center. Uh, and, and his leadership qualities are off the charts uh, when you talk to a lot of those players uh, around the Texas Southern program. So uh, you're talking about, uh, uh, a team that I think is going to be right in the thick of things. I think they turned a lot of heads last year when they knocked off Southern up there in Dallas. Uh, and then they just knock them off. They shut them out. Uh, that turned a lot of heads with regards to the Texas Southern program. And this is the year that I think a lot of Texas Southern fans have been pointing to uh, in terms of uh, this team has kind of grown up. And, and, and we remember when coach McKinney came in, he talked about uh, building the foundation up. He got a lot of high school guys, uh, that came in, weren't a lot of transfers, and now uh, the maturity is starting to come to fruition. So I think they'll be right in the thick of things. And all I could think about during that interview was, boy, the Swag West is going to be an absolute dog fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good thing. Good thing when you talk about uh, the dog fight in the West uh, in terms of Swag. It's going to be fascinating. A lot of folks are punching the ticks 
ticket for Texas Southern University. Can they get over the hump? Which is weird because you think about it, they dominated the Western Division. Obviously, didn't open up the season well against Prairie View, but everybody else quietly got it done. Um, so while a lot of folks are thinking about the other Western Division, this is a team that's got it done against them. Can they do it again? Uh, they have some tough road trips, but as you said, leadership-wise from the quarterback, it looks like they've been in a good position. They started out on home against Prairie View. Big weekend to get things done. It'll be fascinating to see what that looks like. The game will be exciting. With that, let's take our last break. We'll come back on the other side, close it up with a little information that was discussed on HBC Nightly. I want to get these gentlemen's thoughts on this. We kind of teased this out during uh, the week of the Celebration Bowl prep last week, but uh, we'll get in that with Joshua Sims Sr. Uh, as he leads HBCU Nightly had John Grant come on there and some great conversation with all this conference churning that we kind of started uh, coming out our last show. But now we're going to take it in a slightly different direction and talk about what does that mean for HBCUs in terms of a uh, HBCU national championship, particularly at the FCS level. Some comments were made there. Kind of want to get you all thoughts on that. Uh, since we didn't have it, have you on there last night, want to get your thoughts on the record now. So we'll take this last break, come back on the other side, and we'll do just that. Get your thoughts on that. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Of course your beard works itself. That's so you. It's just up here on the right. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a sixth sense. And a head-up display. They're here. Hey, it's the field. Warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life because at the heart of every Buick SUV is you. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High-quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to love you. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, sir. and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill. With inside the HBC Sports Lab with the birthday boy, Professor Bishop, Professor Washington, in here. As I alluded to before we went into that break, um, article was written by Chris Stevens, HBCUsports.com, that was referencing uh, Joshua Sims Sr. that leads HBCU nightly. Um, and conversation talked about conference churning, all the things that were taking place, and it then delved into – uh, about HBCUs and does this change the tra trajectory or the plan uh, in regards to HBCUs moving from FCS to FBS? We've had that conversation, really good details. Uh, but then it was fascinating because it kind of turned uh, and then it turned about talking about a black college football playoffs. And I want to be careful about this because this is talking about it at the FCS level. Um, obviously, we have great HBCU Division II programs. We see those programs that are putting out a petition uh, to move programs in terms of doing a week zero opening match, uh, if you would, football game between the CIAA and uh, SIC. You also have the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference at the NIA level. But this conversation was focused on the FCS level, and John Grant happened to be listening to the show last night, so he got some thoughts in here. So I'm going to read this off a little bit of this, so if you would, um, hold on, and I want to get your thoughts. Um, black college football playoffs, highly unlikely anytime soon, says Celebration Bowl director uh, John Grant. 
With the NCAA experience in Power 5 moving and expanding the football subdivision playoffs, many HBCU football stakeholders have wondered when the MEAC and SWAC would create their own playoff series. According to Celebration Bowl Executive Director John T. Grant Jr., that is unlikely to happen anytime soon unless some serious shifts happen. Quote, a playoff would require some realignment of games to make room on the front end, end quote, Grant Hope told HBCU Nightly. Uh, that was on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, early this week, um, really yesterday. And so if you get a chance, you can go back because it's recorded. You can go listen to that. Again, that's uh, HBCU Nightly. Uh, great conversation. I got in there and got to provide a lot of historical, a lot of business uh, Josh opened it up, and then he came back and asked me to give a platform in terms of some of the business of why this conference training is taking place. Those are listening to us. You heard some of the, but I did share some other business platforms there. But also what John talked about in regards specifically to the Black College football playoffs was, quote, the second part of that is the time of the celebration bowl. It would have to be moved to a later on in the bowl season, which is highly unlikely because of the availability of television windows, end quote. So I thought that was important about us educating our fans and starting to understand uh, that as we grow and we're in a great place, and a lot of that was talked about, is taking advantage of that and growing it more. But to understand when you start um, expanding that the calendar of the window becomes just that much more important to understand that. Uh, in addition, as it is currently stands, the cricket, Celebration Bowl is the official first game of each bowl season, complete with a national TV time slot ABC. You know, would that put that in danger? Uh, this past December, the NCAA announced an FDS playoff expansion from four teams to 12 for the 24-25 season with a 16-team playoff still on the table in the future. Quote, there will be bowl games that will be squeezed because of the playoff expansion, end quote, Grant says. Uh, which not necessarily affects uh, the Celebration Bowl, particularly at the FCS level, but what will that happen if you're talking about FBS programs is kind of where that quote came in there. With that in mind, he also explained that the current schedule benefits the winners of the VAC SWAC and would take a traditional break move from a black college football playoff to occur. And so we know that the challenge with that, but also moving um, the Bayou Classic and the challenge of what that would take to move that traditional which he openly said would not highly likely would happen. Uh, but so you can go to HBCU Sports, read the rest of that article. In there it has where you can actually go listen uh, to HBCU Nightly as it's recorded on Twitter, or you can go straight to HBCU Nightly. Uh, but wanted to make sure I get those plugs in there. But I thought it was an intriguing dialogue and really great dynamics and thoughts. Uh, Keisha Campbell, the athletic director of South Carolina State, oftentimes she listens in there. But she gave some other information in regards to giving insight. And why I really like this is because it gives a chance for us to educate the fans. we got a lot of fans that are passionate and have a lot of interest of what they would like to see. But oftentimes over the years, I'm not sure if we've done our part, whether that is the media in terms of HBCU sports media specifically, or athletic directors, VP of athletics, presidents and chancellors for that matter, have done enough to make sure that we got the information out uh, to make sure our fans are educated and informed about the sporting landscape in regards to where we are and outside of that. And so that's what we try to do on this show. So I thought this was an excellent opportunity as we come up to close this last segment, give both of you an opportunity to talk about that. So, Mike, uh, that's a lot to unpack there, but you can go in any direction you want. But give me your thoughts on what uh, I just kind of put on the table. Yeah, the, the the it is a lot to unpack, Doctor Bill. And if you look at all of the key elements involved in the issue, we call you the professor. Mike. Unpack it, brother. Unpack it. <laughs> so you know, you look at first. And I think Doctor, and you know, I call his Doctor Doctor uh, John Grant alluded to was timing. Timing is everything. And if you take the the component of timing, time the timing of the celebration bowl. There are a lot of other ancillary stakeholders that are tied to that date. Not only is it the start of the bowl season, but there are a lot of deals that, that take place 
given the celebration bowl occurs at that time. And for that celebration bowl to move, does that impact a lot of the deals, a lot of infrastructure that is surrounding the media coverage, the branding, all of the deals are predicated on a certain date when you negotiate that. So if you move that back a week or two weeks, whatever, does that impact that? And probably the answer is yes. I don't know how much or to what degree, but yes, it does. And there were some points. I tried to get into HBCU nightly and listen to the whole thing, but it's a very good point. You move that, and then now you've created spacing. What do you do with the Bayou Classic, which is typically – in uh, Thanksgiving, the la- you know, right after Thanksgiving, that is a tradition. You move that, that you breaking from years and years of tradition. And I don't know how that sits well with your stakeholders and the folks that support that as well. So now you've got two entities. Now you're moving and breaking and you're going to impact a lot of stakeholders, a lot of visibility. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, the the teams, the alignment, do you get larger? Because in order to go to a larger pay, uh, playoff schedule, go from four to 12 teams, then in 2025, four to 16 teams, that's a significant jump. But you notice that the conferences are realigning first before making that move. And I would see that if we even went down that road, I think that the HBCUs would have to realign, get larger, make that move. That brings in a whole nother question of who do you realign? How do you realign? Who do you add to the SWAC? Who do you add to the MEAC? They are already taking advantage of the break and the timing. And now you're adding teams, switching timelines, impacting stakeholders. There's a lot of moving pieces that, you right now would seem to negatively impact that, you know, that's uh, that's to me is at the surface. It gets deeper, but it, I'm looking at the time and I want to let CB get in here as well. Yeah. Good uh, stuff. Before I go to you CB to get your thoughts there. I did want to say Edwin D Moore. I appreciate that. Uh, HBCU nightly, as I said, you could go to HBC sports to get a link to go to X formerly known as Twitter, but you also can go to YouTube and Facebook to get the entire interview. Uh, because there was a lot that was broken down in that show in a lot of areas. Uh, but I did want to get Charles' uh, thoughts on this as well. No, I, I, I mean, I, I think right now I would say patience. Uh, like like uh, John Grant said, I mean, it would take a seismic shift for something to happen. And I alluded to it the other day. I think our biggest asset is also one of our biggest uh, liabilities, and that's tradition. Uh, and, and And sometimes when you tamper with it, it, it sets yep. our fan base off in, in a completely different direction. And uh, sometimes I, I, and for even for me as a fan, I've had to learn how to temper uh, tradition for what is progress. If you had asked me five years ago, if there would not be a PAC 12 or if Texas and OU would now be in the SEC, I would have laughed. But as we start to see now, you know, uh, I mean, sports I business is something that is ever changing and ever evolving, and it's and it's chasing, you know, uh, the dollar. I, and, and, and in in reality, I, I I would not take it off the table. I would just say, you know, let's see if a seismic shift does happen to where we can uh, actually have the conversation at some point in time. And the other thing about business that is important important in there is also the politics. of uh, yeah. you know, there, there's some politics in terms of the Bayou Classic, yeah. uh, not only in terms of tradition, uh, but there are politics associated with the Bayou Classic being in North, New Orleans on that weekend. Yep. And how does that affect? Um, and people don't like to get in this because it's very sensitive in terms of the appropriation coming from the states in terms of how they tie their hands in there. A lot of times you see that in the state of Texas with the state fair class. Uh, yeah. even though one of the teams from Louisiana, the other one's from Texas, and there's uh, politics. And people know about Louisiana politics, and it's not always clean. You can go to Texas politics, and we certainly uh, know that's not clean. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> there's things that you need to think about that and understanding, you know, just how deep these things go. And uh, shout out uh, to Sarah that, that agreed with me in terms of uh, concerns and making sure our schools do a better job of communicating and telling the story and educating the fans 
in a much more broader uh, way. We'll continue to do our part. Last thing quickly I want to get in here um, as we extend it just a little bit is there was the news, and this is outside of HBCUs, but it certainly can affect HBCUs. Uh, in this case, it affects a couple of HBCUs. Bryant University that was in the Big South. If you recall, Big South and OVC, you know, came together to create the football conference. Uh, um, and that was four schools from the Big South and the six schools from the OVC. One of those schools in the OVC was a Division II. So they had to come together to make sure they could get their playoffs. But now you got Bryant University that just came into the Big South is leaving and was announced as for the 24th season will be the 16th member of the Colonial, now the Coastal Athletic Conference, or Athletic Association. So it looks like they're probably going to take on the SWAC uh, division type model. Uh, but now the question comes in in regards to shifting back to the OVC part of this is Tennessee State. You know, how strong is the OVC in terms of them continue to move forward. What does this mean for Tennessee State in regards for them staying in that conference as conference is turning? And we already see it affecting at the FCS level. What does this mean for HBCU? So it's something to keep your eyes on um, and maybe something we can tease out later. But I wanted to get that on the table just to let you know how massive uh, this conference churning expansion is happening and how fast it happens and how it's at multiple layers levels and layers to what is taking place. With that being said, I want to close out on that in regards to our show for the week, Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Gattaca Bill, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington Charles Bishop. Uh, we want to thank our guest, Coach Skeet from Texas Southern University, women's head basketball coach. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, every Tuesday and Thursday right here at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. We look forward to next week as we discuss the latest news in the lab. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Twitter, Facebook, uh, and YouTube. Inside the HBC Sports Lab, dream big. Continue to move forward. Make sure all of y'all thank you for uh, shouting out Charles Bishop for his 50th happy birthday again. A show you. dedicated to you. 50 years. Appreciate that. Again, we'll make sure we take care of you. We, we know you you get upset with us. We're going to do you right. We we already learned the lesson there. So we... <laughs> We know that this is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk with you soon. <laughs> Charles? Of course. Mike? Lecture. This is. It looked like he cheated on you, Mike. Charles? <laughs> <laughs>